Mr. Stark, it smells like a new car in here! When you're ready, why don't you try that on? Thank you to CyberGhost VPN for sponsoring this video. With over 30 million users worldwide, CyberGhost is one of the world's leading VPN servers. Click the link in the description to get a 79% off discount. So last week I asked you guys on my YouTube story if you wanted to see me make the Iron Spider web shooter. And uh, well, sorry about Bita Singh, but all the rest of you guys said you wanted it. Keep the comments coming. I want to know what you guys want me to make because I'll definitely be making more videos by request, including all of the Marvel weapons that you guys have been bombarding me with in the comments. Speaking of Marvel weapons, I want to give a big shout out to these people for their awesome Marvel weapons. Viren Goyle, Isaiah's King Rosales, Jefferson Dunaway, Jazz Kirat Singh, Rishal Shalu, Justin Burel, Sean Budd, and T. Rob Wallace. Thank you guys so much for submitting those pictures and videos. It really makes my day when I see you guys making awesome stuff for my videos. And hey, if you want a shout out, you can email or DM me a picture or video of something that you made from one of my videos and I will gladly feature you. Now, don't worry because I've provided free downloadable templates which you can find in the description of this video so you guys can follow along and build your own Iron Spider web shooter at home. But before I go ahead and reveal to you guys how I built this, let me tell you about today's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN. VPNs are a great way to protect your private information online. When you use CyberGhost VPN, all your data is protected with military-grade encryption, which allows you to surf the web safely and anonymously without anyone, including CyberGhost themselves, being able to track your internet activity. The great thing about CyberGhost is since they encrypt all your data, you'll be fully protected when you're using public Wi-Fi. Nowadays, with free Wi-Fi being so common and widespread, your information could be at risk of getting into the wrong hands, so a VPN is more important to have than ever before. CyberGhost hosts thousands of servers across over 90 countries. So look, watch how easy it is for me to change my location. Let's say I wanted to be in Japan right now. Well, no problem. With the simple press of a button, I can change locations almost instantly. By changing your location, you'll be able to access blocked content in your region from over 30 streaming services, as well as different websites, video games, social media platforms, and pretty much everything else that's blocked in your region. Just one subscription allows you to protect up to seven devices at a time, whether you're on Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, or pretty much any other device. If you use my link in the description, you can get 79% off the original price, which comes out to just $2.75 a month. The best part is that they've got a 45 day money back guarantee, so it's absolutely risk free. Again, make sure you click the link in the description below, and just want to say a big thank you to CyberGhost for supporting my channel. I left links in the description to all the materials I used, and if you're going to make this, I would really recommend that you use the links to buy the same spring and magnets that I have, because these particular materials are what make up the shooting mechanism and they require very specific specs, so you can use some other alternative, but I can't really guarantee that it'll work and you'll sort of be on your own at that point. By the way, I numbered all of the template pieces in the order that they appear in this video, so they should be very intuitive and easy to follow. The first thing I did was make the base of the web shooter. Now, the general idea behind how I'm going to build this whole web shooter is I'm basically going to make all of the major big shapes and structures using cereal box, and then I can layer on some craft foam here and there for the purpose of detail work and texture. I used a small piece of duct tape to cover up that hole right there because later on we'll be adding a magnet. At this point I just started bending and shaping this piece so that I could wrap it around my wrist and the great thing about foam is that it's very flexible so even though I'm bending and shaping it, the foam still maintains a smooth texture uh, as opposed to the cereal box which serves more of the purpose of providing strength and rigidity. Once I formed the web shooter to the shape of my wrist, now I went ahead and added some simple detail work using the foam. After I finished the basic structure of the whole web shooter, I figured it would be a good time to paint it right before it starts to get complicated with all the different layers and whatnot, which would make it harder to paint. Probably the most iconic part of this web shooter is this big top piece here which sort of arches, and that's what I'm going to work on next. Now, this piece might seem a little intimidating when you first look at it, but if you break it down into small sections, you'll realize that it's actually simpler than you might think, 
and it's really just the grooves and detail work which make it look more complicated than it is. Of course, I've included all of these pieces in the template, so if you plan on making this, just follow along with this video and you should be able to replicate the look that I achieved. As you can see, I folded over all those little tabs and that's just going to help us later on when we go to connect the pieces together. Alright, well we can go ahead and set that piece aside for now because we're going to work on some of the other pieces that are going to connect onto those tabs that we just folded. Well, now I can assemble these pieces together, which will create that sort of cone look that we're going for. And I can do that by simply gluing the pieces together using the tabs. Remember how I talked about breaking this piece into small sections? Well, there's one more section left to do which will complete that tapered look that we're trying to achieve. There are more tabs along this piece that will of course be helpful for connecting and gluing later on. Now these inner tabs right here don't really need to be folded because this piece is going to get glued on basically almost flush with the other piece. There's a small detail that fits where those big empty spots that you see right there are. So let's go ahead and do those right now. Now time for the fun part which is painting it. Before we can glue this to the web shooter there's a couple more details that I have to do which I waited until after the gold paint to do because those details are a different color and I really didn't want to do it before painting and then have to mask it off. If you're going to make this, then make sure you use white glue and not super glue on those blue pieces because super glue will bleed right through the paper and it won't look as good. Now using those tabs that we created earlier, I glue the two pieces together like this. This right here is one of the weirder detail pieces that is on this web shooter, but nonetheless this gets glued onto the front just like this. Next, we need to work on the actual shooting part of the web shooter, so the first step to doing that is creating the barrel. And we want this barrel to be just large enough to allow the spring to slide freely, so once I've got the correct size tube, I can glue that end of the paper shut. Since this barrel is made out of paper, I reinforce the whole thing by adding a layer of super glue. And after the super glue dries, it would be a good idea to test to see if the spring still fits because the glue would have made the walls thicker. Using some thin corrugated cardboard, I cut out this super tiny ring and then hardened it with super glue. And that inside hole was cut out with a hole puncher, so a hole puncher comes in handy here. Once that ring is all dried and hardened, I can glue that ring to the end of the barrel. And more gold paint. The next thing I'm going to do is make the projectile, which is that thing that's going to shoot out of the barrel and stick to metal surfaces. So to do that, I first start by wrapping some paper around a bamboo stick like this. Now I can glue a 5x3mm magnet onto the end of the projectile, and then flip it over and glue a 6x3 magnet on the other side. 
I wrap a thin strip of paper around the 6x3 magnet and add lots of super glue to harden it. And the spring just slides onto the projectile like this and we can add a little bit of glue on the end like that to keep it in place. So this is essentially how the web shooter is able to shoot and as you can see when you load the projectile into the barrel that spring compresses. For the web I just simply used some dental floss. To make this web shooter actually shoot a line of string and not just that tiny projectile, we need to glue on a 5x3 magnet to the string. Before we can glue the barrel onto the web shooter, we need to make this nozzle piece which is going to wrap around the barrel. Once the paint on this dried, I slid the barrel into here and glued those two pieces together. Now we can glue this entire piece to the web shooter and I'm going to make a small 1 inch mark right here to indicate where I want this piece to be glued. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want too much of the nozzle glued onto the web shooter or else it'll end up sticking out the back. This piece right here is basically going to hold the web cartridge. Once that gets painted gold, I can glue that right there. For the trigger, I'm going to start by gluing this thin piece of corrugated cardboard to this popsicle stick. Since the trigger is black, I'm going to be painting it using some gloss black spray paint. In order to make the trigger be able to flex down when you press on it, I attached this small popsicle stick using a piece of duct tape and that way the trigger can bend in between that gap right there. When I put that piece of duct tape there, I sort of covered up some of those holes so I just simply reopened them using a craft knife. Now I made the stop block which is basically this little tiny block that's going to stop the projectile from coming out until that block is manually lowered. I glued that stop block right into that slot right there. While that was drying, I made another piece that looks pretty identical to the one we just made and that's because this piece is also part of the trigger and you'll see how the trigger works very shortly. Now I glued 6x3 magnets in all of these holes and used lots of super glue to make sure they don't pop out. After those magnets fully dried, I glued these two pieces together like so. To complete the trigger, I glued on this foam circle which is the button that you'll press when you want to shoot the web. Now the trigger mechanism is complete and basically how this works is when you flex the trigger, that stop block lowers down and will release the projectile along with all the string attached to it. And at this point we can simply glue the trigger onto the web shooter like this. After that I made the web cartridge which is basically this little box that will hold your string before it all spews out. Now we need to attach a 6x3 magnet to the web cartridge so that it can actually lock onto the web shooter. So to do that I'm just going to use this piece of duct tape and just sort of feed it inside like this. And that magnet on the web cartridge will basically be attracted to this magnet right here. And I added some velcro straps here to make it wearable. The last thing to do before this web shooter is complete is make a reloading stick. Now last video I asked you guys if you wanted to see me make a more efficient reloading system and a bunch of you said you did, so here it is. To shoot the web shooter you first need to load the projectile into the barrel like this. Then simply insert the web cartridge and doing this will make the magnet on the string clip onto the back of the projectile. With a little bit of practice you can start catching the string and that'll allow you to grab onto metal objects. Well now all that's left to do is go out and be a good friendly neighborhood spider-man and combat some local graffiti.
Look at this dude. <laughs> hey, well if you liked this video, then you'll probably like my homecoming web shooter too, so click or tap the screen to check out that video. Thank you so much to my patron Anthony Riolo, and if you would like to become a patron as well, there's a link in the description below to my Patreon page, but hey, you can always support this channel for free by subscribing to see my future videos.